The hunt for the kidnapped Derby winner Shergar has moved across the Irish border to Northern Ireland. A ransom of £40,000 has been asked for, not the two million first reported. Three racing journalists, Lord Oaksey, Derek Thompson and Peter Campling, flew from London to Belfast today and then went at the kidnapper's request to a farm in County Down. A telephone caller said Shergar was well rugged up and in good hands. The Sporting Life, the main racing paper, is offering in tomorrow's edition a reward of £10,000 for the safe return of the horse. From Northern Ireland, Jeremy Thompson now reports. None of the three journalists knew why they'd been chosen, or even if their summons to act as go-betweens was genuine. They'd had no official backing from Shergar's syndicate. But within hours, Oaksey, Campling and Thompson were heading for Belfast, believing that their mysterious mission offered the best hope so far of retrieving the missing racehorse. Derek, do you really know what you're going into in Belfast today? No, and I don't think any of us do, actually, but I think our conscience has told us to get on this plane and come over, because I think we all agree that if something did happen to the horse and we weren't there, then we'd live with that conscience for the rest of our life, and that would be very, very unfortunate. So that's the reason we're here. All they had to go on was the anonymous caller's promise that he would contact them in a Belfast hotel. But within minutes of checking in, the drama took on a new turn. Thompson received a phone call in the hotel lobby. Um, <clears throat> how, how far is that from Dublin? Yeah, uh, from uh, Belfast. 30 miles. Right. And uh, who am I talking to, by the way? A man using the fitting code name of Arkel Say instructed again, the journalist to drive to an address in County Down 30 miles outside the city. Bye bye. Well, that's interesting. As night fell, the action moved swiftly to a lonely farmhouse at Ard Glass, the home of one of Ulster's leading racehorse trainers, Jeremy Maxwell. The three would-be negotiators arrived to find the same anonymous Irishman who claims to have Shergar had already called Mrs. Judy Maxwell three times, saying the demand was now £40,000. Oh, he seems to be a very rational, well-spoken man. There really doesn't seem to be a lot more to gather about it. We feel we, we should be negotiating a bit more. We'd like to go on a bit further with negotiations. Do you feel from talking to the man that he is genuine, he is the likely holder of Shergar at the moment? I think he is the likely holder of Shergar because he's been back to us so often today. Does it make you optimistic, your talks to him so far? Yes. I think I will be optimistic. He, he seems quite rational and, and perfectly pleasant about the whole thing. He doesn't sound as though he's going to be um, unkind to the horse. But all they could do was wait anxiously for further instructions, still not knowing if the whole thing was a hoax. Then in mid-evening came phone call number four and a fresh demand. He's asked Peter Camping, John Oaksey and myself, the three journalists that he asked to come over from London, to ring round the 34 members of the syndicate now to find out if they're prepared to pay this £40,000. Now obviously it's difficult, we don't exactly know who, which one is of these 34, but the man obviously in charge is His Highness the Aga Khan, just outside Paris. So our job now is to try and get in touch with His Highness, and hopefully he will come up with a yes or no whether he's prepared to pay this 40,000. If he is, apparently, according to the uh, caller, he has said uh, once it is made public that we are going to give the 40,000, he will then ring back with further news about the horse. But even if the caller does hold the answer to the Shergar mystery, tonight there's still no sign that the shareholders are willing to pay up. Jeremy Thompson, News at 10, County Down, Northern Ireland.